So, welcome to Besançon. I'm in the capital of French watchmaking. Behind me is the Hotel de Ville of Besançon. Now, the reason I have come to the city is to research and present uh, the history of, in particular, a very famous watchmaker in the Montandon family. And this is Henri Louis Montandon. He was an inventor and a master watchmaker. He has upwards of eight uh, inventions or patents to his name. And uh, he tended to be of the, one of the more uh, prosperous and successful of the watchmakers. And his son, Henri Edward, would uh, resume the business after his death in 1884 and would eventually uh, continue, continue his business both fabricating from Besançon but uh, opening a comptoir in Paris on the Rue de Turenne, number 98. However, uh, this is just a welcoming video to this capital of French watchmaking and I hope you enjoy. So at present, I'm on Rue des Granges in front of number 59. Now, this is the location of Henri's watch shop between 1855 and 1870. And this is a very solid establishment. We can see this architecture is quite impressive, but this is not the very first location he occupied in Besançon. Now he arrived in 1850, 1851. It's not exactly clear what his location was uh, in his earlier years. However, by 1855, we do know he is here. And he remained at this location where he was fabricating watches until 1870 when he moved to La Grande Rue. I am also on uh, Rue de Grange at uh, number 58, which is this building right here. Now this building seems to have been utilized by both uh, the, the children of Henri Louis, and this is the, the children of Henri Louis, Paul Ernest's wife, was registered as inhabiting this, probably the breaking below. And uh, there is an, another record of an Onesim Montandon, and he must be some sort of a close relative, although his identity is not exactly clear, but he was an ouvrier uh, watchmaker. So it's just a little bit of a note on these allies and relatives. So I'm in the city of Besançon, and I'm on uh, La Grande Rue and in front of number 85 and this is the location which is currently a pharmacy this is the location of Henri Montandon this is Henri Louis uh, who came in 1850 to Besançon and he occupied, occupied this uh, location from 1870 and then it was later taken up by his son who was here until at least 1894 to 1895 so oh, this was a, a watch fabrication location. Now this would later change. So I'm on the Rue Batante 2931, and back in this courtyard was the workshops of Henri Edward Montandon. 
and this was between 1895 and at least 1918. Now, after he departed Besançon for Paris, he eventually moved his uh, watch production to this area, in this courtyard, where he apparently had his fabrication workshops. And they, they were making and assembling the watches here, which he was selling in Paris. So this is rather interesting. And this is the last chapter of this Henri Fontaine's line of watchmaking, which started with Henri Louis in 1850 in Besançon and terminated with Henri Edouard, probably at his death around 18, or 1929, 1930, around this period. So as I'm walking down the Rue Batante, and this is a rather long street, there are a lot of industrial shops and whatnot, but uh, this is also uh, the location of a David Armand, also called Armand Montandon, who was a watchmaker uh, in these parts, and he lived from 1865 to, eight, uh, to 1928. Now, uh, Armand, we find him at Rue de Batante, uh, 82 and number 102 so just a small note for the record so i'm on rue de la bibliothèque and we have a current watchmaker. This is uh, the watches Houtinon, Besançon. Now this particular watchmaker was one of the uh, uh, companies with which Henri Louis Montandon did business and we find on his invoices that he is also selling Houtinon pieces. So this is quite fascinating. I'm on the corner of Megavon Street and uh, Laurent Megavon was a Swiss watchmaker who in around 1793 established a watch factory which was a Jacobin project and many Swiss uh, watchmakers including many Montandans came to Besançon and began watchmaking here and we find that many of these indeed brought, even brought their own watchmaking tools with them but this was a revolutionary project that was supported by the revolutionary government in France during the 1790s and uh, this would establish a huge factory of thousands of workers. Now this project eventually collapsed. It was not economically feasible. It wasn't run very well. But this is uh, one of the reasons why we have many Montanans transferring from Switzerland into Besançon. I'm in the courtyard of the Museum of Time in Besançon, 
and now tomorrow I do have a meeting with the staff of the museum to view an object which is um, signed Fique Montendon, this is Frédéric Montendon, so tomorrow I will be viewing the watch. However, I think I will acquaint myself, this is the largest watch and clock museum in the area and uh, it should be rather interesting, so let us see what lies inside the walls of the museum. file we have uh, about the entry um, in the museum collection mm -hmm. but it's really there is nothing uh, and I thought it had connected with uh, this Frederick Montaigne okay. because his partner Luba uh, in 1860s uh, purchased most of this uh, Bove company in mm -hmm. Fleurier and I thought maybe this was some business then I was researching yeah, here on the, but here we have some uh, engraved number that I so right. but is my light? I'm not sure. <laughs> now this may have been made for a special occasion, not for oh, sale. Okay. Not for sale, like this um, uh, Olfin a Montandon watch that a friend of mine owns. He. Um, he's the ancestor of the mayor of Clermont-Ferrand. Oh, really? Yes. It seems like this is made uh, échappement uh, to to. It seems to me like it's like an advertisement, you know, some yeah. something to yeah. you to to prove that it's this mm. system. This. Uh, but is this it, is, right. it's interesting that it? there's no. Now I have seen like this marking here. The, uh, what in these. This one. Fake. The, yeah, there's the, this is the fique, and then there's um, it, the, the way that these. The, mm -hmm. This is very interesting because I haven't seen it done like this, but I, I can show you. Um, th you might be very interested. So these watches, this Frederick was signing watches in different ways, mm -hmm. and he was signing, um, for example. But it has this flowery motif again. Uh, it yeah. could be the same. Uh, but it's not the same motif. I, I mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This there is something above and not up. 
Yeah, there's the some. Writing is the same. There, there's an underscore. Mm -hmm. um, on the other watch, the other fik, it does appear more uh, visible, but uh, there, I think he changed engravers mm -hmm. many times because he was an établisseur mm -hmm. and he was a watchmaker, but I think a lot of the. So at present I'm on the Rue de Marand and I'm in front of number eight and Rue de Marand number eight was the location of a Charles Montenden and from this was during 1875 we know he was here and now this is a very mysterious individual this Charles Montenden he may have been a close relative of Henri Louise this is not exactly clear there are approximately three candidates and one of these, it's not exactly clear, uh, the actual uh, relation uh, as they have a sort of a mysterious, uh, this Jacques de Montandon was a so-called, called Montandon, may have been, this individual may have been one of these individuals. Now, uh, Charles Montandon was here in 1875, but we also know that there was a partnership registered here under the name of Cercle et Montandon, and this was uh, specifically uh, in 1895 to 1897. Now this partnership uh, was very prominent in observatory uh, trials of chronometers between 1889 and 1895. So this was a rather interesting partnership, and uh, once again the principal uh, was probably Charles Montandon, this, this was most likely still him at this period, uh, but very little is known of Circular and what his first name was. So, but this is a, a, a partnership that did participate in the 1889 Paris uh, exhibition. We we'll see their participation, and they were able to take gold and silver awards during these observatory trials, uh, which was very fascinating. And I can provide the serial numbers to their pieces and a little bit of the information that we know about their participation there. So. So I have a very big update uh, concerning the research that I'm doing to isolate the identity of this uh, partnership, this Cercle et Montandon, who was uh, participating in observatory trials during the, from 1889 until the mid 1890s. We find them representing France in 1889 at a, a world, the World Exposition in Paris. However, this, uh, uh, this in, the identity of this individual now, we, I know that he is located at uh, uh, number eight, uh, Rue Marand. And uh, after a visit to the archives, I was fortunate to be able to cross link the data of his children and isolate the very individual. This is Charles August Montenegro Clerc. 
And it is very interesting, his data is missing from Le Montendon, a Frederick J. Montandon. However, uh, it is clear his father, Jean-Louis, born in 1797, and his, uh, his own birth was from 1832, and he appears to have been born in France at Montjoie, uh, which is outside of Besançon. So we do have now his identity. We do not have the identity of this Cercle who was in the partnership. But what's fascinating about this individual, and this totally correlates and cross, uh, crosses over to the object I viewed at the Museum of Time in Besançon. Uh, now this was fabricated, this object was fabricated by Frédéric Montandon, clerk. So uh, in reviewing the genealogical information, I find out that the uh, Frederick Clerc's father was the brother of Charles Auguste of Cercle and Montandon, so they were cousins. This is a very close nexus. I did not expect to find such uh, close uh, correlation with these two watchmakers. But this is really fascinating. This develops my uh, comprehension of this brand, and in particular, this line of watchmakers. Um, very deep, very deeper than I had previously understood. So this is a very big uh, discovery for me. And uh, this will be very good to set the record straight and to um, identify and codify this, uh, our understanding of this partnership, Cercle and Montendon. And now this Charles, Charles Auguste, also known by Charles, uh, he had been making watches and at, I believe it was Dijon, his watches were confused with Henri Louis of Besançon. There were two different Montandans from Besançon who were fabricating and presenting at these expeditions. And now Henri Louis has seven patents. There is an eighth patent, which is only uh, listed Montandan. However, a, an additional source for this last patent, I can provide the patent number. This actually correlates not to Henri Louis, but to Charles Montana because we find number eight uh, Rue Marand again. So this is associated with that patent. So we do have, uh, very interestingly, this Charles seems to have been constantly in the shadow of Henri Louis, that m much of his work seems to have been uh, uh, almost uh, uh, mistakenly uh, attributed to Henri, such as the watches he presented at the Dijon uh, fair, but also uh, this patent in addition. But this is just a sort of a note for the record and revelation of this um, the mysterious uh, Charles of Besançon is now mystery resolved. So just to recap the genealogy of this um, very interesting situation. So we have this Louis Henri who was the father of Jean-Louis and Samuel. Now, Jean-Louis is the father of Charles Auguste, who is the uh, principal in the partnership of Cercle and Montendon. And Samuel, uh, now these two are brothers, of course. His son, uh, Frederic, is Frederic, who was the établisseur in Neuchâtel. This is the third generation already. However, he's the one who is responsible for fabricating the watch that is located in the museum at Besançon, signed Fique Montandon. So we're, it's not exactly clear how Charles Auguste was signing his watches. Were these watches Cercle et Montandon? Was it Montandon? We, we really don't know. Um, we do have uh, many serial numbers, uh, at least 41 objects uh, by their fabrication. And uh, uh, little more, more than the serial numbers is um, no, uh, known to us. Um, so it should be very interesting should one of his watches uh, or uh, the, the Cercle et Montandon pair um, uh, surface. Uh, but I just wanted to clarify the close nexus that these cousins, first cousins, uh, are <laughs> both uh, remarkable in this uh, Montandon cleric line.
for the uh, amount of assistance that I received in the course of doing my research. I would like to thank the following people who were instrumental in my success. I would like to thank Fanny Calais and Séverine Petit, curators at the Musée du Ton de Bessançon. Uh, they were very helpful and supportive, and I was able to have access to the uh, Frédéric Lontan de Noach in their uh, collection. I would like also to thank, uh, for her efforts, uh, Sandrine Natta, archivist at the Municipal Archives, Archives Municipal de Bessançon. Uh, with her help, I was able to isolate the identity of Charles Auguste Montandon uh, um, with the records at the address of Moran 8 and through his children, where his entire genealogy was made clear. Uh, and I would also like to thank uh, Anne Betch of the uh, Bessançon Observatory, Technicien de l'Instrumentation Scientifique, uh, she was incredible in her support of this project and, and also uh, was able to uh, open their archives in which I was uh, privy to all of the research uh, material in their possession from 1888 till 1896, the end of this year. Uh, this was uh, all of the watches of Cercle and Montandon, which were tested at the observatory. And I should like also to thank Thomas uh, Carbish, uh, uh, Olager du Baton. He's located at 28 Rue Batante, right across from the uh, atelier of Henri Edouard. And uh, it was very interesting having a conversation with such a polished uh, watchmaking professional. And he's carrying on business practically on top of the site of an old Montandon maker, which is very fascinating. But um, I would like to thank all of these individuals and, of course, uh, my assistant who helped me, uh, Jarska Staller, for um, helping or orchestrating this entire visit and uh, photography and all of the support. Thank you all. I am very appreciative and I hope you enjoyed this video.